Uh, Minister, in the dead of August, a time when often uh, shady deals are done, the uh, Ardmore Studios was sold to an American uh, capital investment firm called Hackman uh, uh, and Square Mile Partners, uh, real estate, American real estate uh, firm. Uh, this is the former National Film Studio, set up in 1958 with state assistance, actually the National Film Studios in the 70s, and it's now been handed over to real estate investment uh, firm. I mean, isn't that just really a form of cultural treason and privatisation that is absolutely, uh, uh, you know, indefensible, frankly? Um, thank you, um, Deputy. And I, I note your question um, I submitted here was to, 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 to make my views known on the recent sale of a, of a studio to a large real estate corporation. Um, so, particularly um, given that the state had only recently disposed of its share of the studios and that the studios had received large amounts of public funding, and my further views on whether it is time to take the studio into public ownership. Um, I understand that the sale of this studio is, is to the world leader in studio infrastructure, and as such, this development will inject further essential investment into Ireland's network of studio infrastructure. It is a positive indication of the increase in sophistication of the development of the screen sector in the last few years and a vote of confidence in the future of Ireland's audiovisual industry. The inward investment will assist in establishing Ireland as a primary location for strategic investment in film and TV drama. I understand that the studio will shortly see an expansion of its studio and support spaces with an additional 21,000 square feet of sound stages and 21,000 square feet of support space added. This sale was conducted between two private sector entities. The grounds for any investigation into the circumstances of the sale are not immediately apparent. In any case, queries around the conduct of the sale would be a matter for the Minister for Enterprise, Trade and Employment. The government's ambition, as stated in the Audiovisual Action Plan, is to establish Ireland as a global hub for the production of film, TV drama and animation. Ireland competes internationally to attract inward productions that bring valuable investment to Ireland and this company with its global reach will assist the growth of our audiovisual industry and this development will underpin that ambition. With the growth in streaming services, the demand for high-end TV series um, is, it's, is almost limitless and the audiovisual industry is transforming at an exponential rate and taking studio infrastructure into state ownership is not something I would be in favour of. The circumstances of the sale is a private matter for the studio's commercial owners. The studio is and was before its sale in full commercial ownership and the state had no stake in ownership. It did not receive public funding in the past decade. From an EU perspective, studios are subject to state aid rules and any state intervention would require EU approval that would not ordinarily be forthcoming. This government recognises the very significant success of our audiovisual industry in recent years and this success has been underpinned by the government's investment in Screen Ireland, the agent responsible for the development of the screen industry. The studio provides world-class production facilities for both indigenous and incoming productions alike and this sale has the potential to bring new investment which will allow ongoing expansion and secure the future of this iconic studio. I have to, I have to say this is quite an extraordinary response from the Minister. First of all, it was referred to as a studio at the beginning. This was a studio that was set up uh, with the assistance of Sean Lamass uh, in 1958. It then became the National Film Studios in the 70s. It was where my left foot was done, the spy who came in from the cold. You can go through the list of uh, classic films, right? This is part of Irish cultural heritage and history. And I should also mention Troy. Uh, and the idea that public money didn't go into it? Are you absolutely joking, Minister? Uh, first of all, Troy, I think, got nine or 10 million from Limerick County Council. Uh, but it ends up in private ownership, extraordinary. Uh, the Section 481 going out to the film producers has probably goes about two to three billion over recent years, uh, probably about a quarter of a billion in Screen uh, Ireland grants, and the state owns nothing. And we did the IDA sold off its share for an undisclosed price in 2018, and then it's flipped to an American company in a deal that is rumoured to be worth about 80 to 90 million euro. Somebody's made a lot of money here, and we used to own this studio. Thank you, Deputy Minister. Thank you, Deputy. Um, film studios are privately owned commercial entities, of which there are a number in Ireland, with several new studios in various stages of development and planning. There is no rationale for public intervention in the provision of film studios as the private sector is, is doing so effectively. There is no evidence that the public sector would be more successful than the private sector in running a film studio. It is also the case that taking one film studio into public ownership would be seen as anti-competitive by other film studio owners. 
Public funding of film studios is a state aid matter and the agreement of the European Commission is not likely to be forthcoming if we were to attempt to take this studio into public ownership. There is a well-known case of the Chuda de la Luz film studio in Alicante, Spain, and in 2012 the European Commission ruled that public subsidies of 260 million be repaid to the regional government as the subsidies violated European competition law and the studio actually closed as a result. Mr. What the EU uh, says is you're supposed to create, with state aid to the film industry, uh, is you're supposed to create a permanent pool, a permanent pool of uh, skills and labour, right? Virtually nobody has a job in the Irish film industry. It's film to film, as, they keep, as the producers keep saying. There's cases before the WRC at the moment where film producers come in and look people who worked on those film productions funded by public money and say, you're not my employee and you never were. Right? That's what's actually going on. And all of these film productions, every single film production, is funded with Section 481 tax relief and with grants from Screen Ireland. So we pay, the people pay, this is the people's money, and the money ends up in the hands of a small number of film producers. And now, the bit of film infrastructure that the IDA sold off, it did have a third of a share in it, but we put money in it, into it and into Troy Studios, now end up in the hands of an American real estate firm. It is cultural treason, in my opinion. It is absolutely shocking. Uh, and the EU requires you that you build up companies of scale for state aid and a permanent pool. We have neither, but we pumped out billions uh, and got nothing for it. Minister. Thank you. What I can tell you is what the, the new investors will bring, Deputy. And as, as a long-term substantial investor in Ireland's creative sector, they have pledged to support job training initiatives to ensure that the local workforce grows to meet the increasing demands of domestic and international content producers. They've already pledged a substantial finan financial commitment towards such job programmes and are looking to partner with stakeholders, including Screen Skills Ireland. Uh, their, their global changing lenses, lenses endowment has committed over 10 million to date and focused primarily on creating screen sector employment opportunities for disadvantaged and under-reserved communities, whether dealing with gender diversity, regionalisation. Um, and and on, on the occasion of the announcement of the, of the sale um, on the press release that that was, uh, was, was released, um, the Joe Devine, the, the chairman of both Troy Studios and Ardmore Studios, said on behalf of the shareholders in both Troy and Ardmore that when they were approached, they realised that this investment could really transform the, the outlook, not just for the two studios, but for the wider industry in Ireland. It would help the development of this indigenous in industry. Thank you, Minister.